Well, I think if there's a lesson here, I mean, if there's a meta lesson, is the regulatory state is often conflicted, and the regulatory state is creating an environment which is really with goals which are mutually incompatible. Mr. Tudor, you mentioned how the regulations are effectively forcing the retirement of, of coal-fired plants and, and inhibiting the development of natural gas. We have a limitation of, from the bureaucratic state of permitting for power lines, which could allow electrons to go from one place to the other. Uh, my chairman mentioned in his opening statements how EPA is not approving carbon um, uh, storage projects, uh, and yet, theoretically, we're trying to decrease the carbon footprint of all these projects. You know, of course, the line from Pogo always comes to mind in this situation, we've met the enemy and he is us, except this time, to be more specific, it is the bureaucratic state. So I'll say on a bipartisan basis, I think that a regulatory reform bill would actually, would actually be incredibly helpful, that could actually help develop goals that are mutually held by both sides if we want to achieve anything. Because right now, Mr. Tudor, you're suggesting we're heading for a train wreck. Now, if you notice on that thing that Senator Lee's head was blocking earlier, I was trying to get around his, trying to get around his ears to see. Um, uh, we, we've been trying that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Louisiana, which is part of the MISO, is considered at high risk. We don't have that much dispatchable renewable. Um, but we obviously have a lot of storms coming off the Gulf, and I assume that's why we were considered at higher risk. In the bipartisan infrastructure bill, Mr. Um, Mr. Rob, there was $3 billion for distributed energy, $3 billion to harden the grid, and $3 billion to tie the two together. Now, what do you see as the potential for this distributed energy build-out to give resiliency to these weather events that Senator King was speaking of? I think, I think the movement to push more generation closer to load is a good one, right? And I think distributed generation, uh, as you're referring to, is, 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 a, is, is, is a positive trend. The challenge with it is that most of that distributed energy is coming on in the form of inverters, uh, largely photovoltaic. Uh, some wind, uh, and, and eventually we're going to see more and more batteries. We need to make sure that those inverters play nicely with the rest of now, the Now, I was told by somebody who's very much into this, so you always have to kind of understand it here from different sources, that if you took a microgrid connected to a battery, uh, that that would give you four hours of power, which may be enough to get you back up. The thought came when you mentioned how in West Texas the inverter flipped off, um, but if it was storing into the battery, then putting right back on, uh, would that not have dealt with the issue? Uh, the combination of, of uh, inverter resources and batteries is a very powerful one, uh, but you need to be cognizant of the scale and duration of protection that you're getting. Four hours is four hours, which is terrific if you've got a three-and-a-half-hour event. If you have a two-week outage associated with a major hurricane, uh, if you have uh, uh, six weeks of cloud cover that you can't generate from, you need longer duration storage than four hours. So it's part of the solution, but it is not the solution. It's definitely part of the solution, but other things need to happen around it. Let me just ask you, do you agree with Mr. Tudor that the EPA's regulations are forcing the early retirement of assets and that we in no way under the current regulatory regime have any possibility of replacing it with suitable renewables and transmission to make up for it? Not in the time frame that we're looking at, no. So you agree with his testimony in I the do. main? And uh, Mr. Estana, do you agree? I do agree we need to hang on to resources that we have today that work until their replacement is here. And But would you also agree that the regulatory state is basically making that impossible? You're a regulated industry, so you may yeah. be a little hesitant, but you can just surreptitiously nod your head yes. Well, I, I, was, <laughs> I was trying to give you a thoughtful answer. I do think that I've said the, the policy pressure is what is pushing most of this generation off. So that is true. I was really hesitating because the most recent EPA rule is a proposal, um, and so I'm not sure where it will end up. But if it ends up the way it is, it will continue to you know, push this generation off the grid. I think Mr. Tudor's point that even their proposal ends up guiding bond markets. James Carville said he once wanted to come back as a bond market because everybody listened to the bond market. <laughs> um, so who's going to float a bond for fossil? I think that was Mr. Tudor's point. Yeah. Um, and, and Dr. Lott, would you agree with all that? I think the system is not set up 
right now to support at the speed we need the diverse mix of technologies we need. If you want a reliable and affordable grid in any future scenario, you want a mix of things. You want variable renewables like wind and solar. They're very cheap when they're around. We want to complement it with energy storage, both batteries for these short periods of time and the long duration we're establishing. We also want firm dispatchable power. And I say that as a group of technologies. This could be geothermal, hydro, I accept fossil that, fuels. but it also means that we're going to have to have regulatory reform if we hope to achieve that. Would you agree with that? And the time required? We need processes that can provide transparency, speediness, so that we can build things, yes. And do we have that now? Our processes are not set up to do the number of things we're trying to do. I'll just finish by saying that should be the challenge of this committee to come up with that regulatory reform bill on a bipartisan basis. I yield.